Uh, so we're back. Uh, and what we're going to do with this troll, of course, is we're going to uh, do the hands today, right? Um, you know, we've kind of built up the box modeling for the body with extrusions. Uh, we even used our um, um, subdivide tool on edges, right, to do the actual shoulder loop. And of course, we did some extrusions and a little bit of edge loop adding to give us enough geometry to create the toes, right? Uh, so what we want to do is we want to do the hands today. Uh, now, of course, as we usually do, um, we are going to, in this case, work with faces. Um, so remember, three is your keyboard for face mode. Although, remember, they're right up here, right? Uh, but one, two, three. Um, which, if you ever decide to use Moto, that's the quick keys for its vertex edge face selection also. <laughs> um, so, you know, kind of the, the newest version of Blender is taking a lot from Maya and a lot from Moto, um, which is great places to take from. Um, so, all right. Uh, in this case, also, I'm going to use my... Uh, drag select, uh, which in here is called circle select, right? So remember, if you hold down uh, left mouse button on your little cursor up here, kind of the orange box cursor, if you hold, hold down left mouse button, that's where your tweak tool's at. You can, of course, sign a quick key to it. Uh, the default is your just your regular uh, pick marquee, like in Maya, and circle select is actually its version of drag select. Um, so uh, this is actual drag select. Uh, and of course, that makes it pretty easy for us when we zoom in to just kind of, you know, um, select those faces there. Um, so we select them kind of on the side of the hand there, two faces, right? And uh, of course, remember, um, in the modifier stack, we do have uh, the uh, mirror modifier, right? I went to add modifiers and I've got mirror on. Uh, the nice thing is I set this up the first time, so it should stay on. Um, make sure things like merge is on, pick the axis you want to mirror it. In this case, I did the x-axis mirror. Uh, and you can, of course, turn up the merge limit so that it won't pull the seam off the center, right? Um, the seam being pulled off the center um, is something you're going to have to deal with a lot more in Blender than in Maya if you're not careful. Uh, it's just part of the nature of the fact that the symmetry functionality in Blender is not it's not bad, but it's not quite as good as uh, the way Maya and Moto work. So uh, just keep that in mind. That can give you a higher merge limit, um, but you still have to kind of be careful around the seam here down the center, right? In fact, just to show that, if I hit W and I hit W for move, there's a point where you can move it too far and it pulls it open. What you do is you just move it back to kind of uh, close it back up, right? Um, so the nice thing is it uh, definitely a lot better than 3D Studio Max, though. Um, it sews it back up easier, it works more predictably, it actually makes sure the seams merge together. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to uh, make sure that uh, tab, because that's what I've set my uh, circle select for. I'll just kind of left click drag those. And of course, remember, if you right click, it brings up, since we're in face mode, all of our face tools, which includes extrude faces. So I can hit uh, that and kind of just drag left to right, and it'll kind of extrude that out a bit. And that you'll see is going to be uh, kind of a part of our hand, right? That's not actually the thumb, believe it or not. That's actually going to be the hand because we want to build this hand to have four polygons wide. It'll actually have a total of eight. We're only going to use kind of the top four, right? We're going to use the top four. Um, uh, or at least uh, we have the option to use the top four, right? Because we're going to make a troll. We're not going to have quite as many fingers. Um, but um, so basically, right, uh, we want a, four, a total of four so that this would work for a human hand if you wanted to make it. So I'm going to go to the other side, right? Just click off so I can deselect. And just left click drag because my circle select is still on, right? Uh, so the nice thing is that kind of stays your default for a while until you kind of switch back, right? Uh, regular Q uh, will actually toggle through your the types. So if you just keep getting Q, it'll toggle from marquee to circle to lasso select um, to tweak, all right? So kind of, kind of cool to know about that. Uh, but I want to select those two, right? Uh, so I just kind of left click, drag to select them. Right click, because that brings up the uh, context of the menu, extrude faces, bring that out a little bit. Uh, keep in mind that um, these tools are actually right up here too, vertex edge face mode, right? Select add. So um, really the Blender 2.8 series had a just a hugely awesome update to their interface uh, and their workflow that makes it a lot easier to find all the tools, um, including just better workflow. And it's, as you guys have hopefully been seeing, it's actually a pretty cool software to work in. It's actually uh, pretty darn good. Um, I've been fairly pleased with it lately. Uh, so um, that extrusion gives us now, you can see kind of a total of, uh, and sometimes your drag select's a little big, right? So um, it gives us kind of a total of four uh, right there, right? Um, so that's what we want to use to actually make our fingers. Now, of course, in this case, we're not really going to uh, make all of those fingers. It's a troll. We can have fun. You guys don't have to make four fingers. If you want to make four fingers, you can. If you want to make three, you can. If you want to make two, that's fine also. 
Um, just to keep it simple for us, I'm going to make two. Uh, I'm going to do it similar to the toe, though, where I'm going to have a, a big finger and then a smaller one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of um, left-click drag to select those two. And then we can, of course, right-click to extrude faces, bring that out of it. And then, of course, if we hit W, that's, of course, uh, just like uh, pretty much all software out there nowadays, uh, particularly if you turn on industry compatible for Blender. Uh, remember, all the other videos are up. I have posted videos in the post section of uh, uh, Microsoft Teams for our class uh, for all the videos. Uh, I did an intro video that wasn't even really about modeling the guy. It was just about can you guys see the basics kind of interface and features of Blender. Um, and then, of course, we built this character from the ground up. You have access to those videos anytime you want, right? They're not posted into Teams. They're actually YouTube links. So you guys can go back and watch those as many times as you need to build this, right? This troll is not due till the end of the year, right? Basically that last week of class for this year uh, is when this is due. So we got plenty of time to build the base mesh, UV wrap it, do a bit of sculpting and painting on it and render it. We've got a lot of time to work on this guy. So don't feel like you have to rush, but definitely make sure to kind of be building and reasonably keeping up with what I'm doing uh, for, uh, for the weeks, right? Um, so of course the middle mouse button is that great little kind of quick key for the um, the view move. And uh, remember it works for rotate too, so E for rotate, right? Uh, uh, middle mouse button will do a view rotate. Then we can of course hit W for middle mouse button, kind of move that over. And then we can just, uh, you know, maybe kind of bring it up a little more. Right click, extrude faces, we can do kind of another one there. And uh, move will stay on, right? So I can just hit E for rotate, middle mouse button. And then you can kind of try it from the different views, right? So I'm rotating my camera around. R for scale. Now remember, this has all the standard manipulators, right? Just like you saw in Maya, there's the, the uh, red, green, and blue ones. There's the little squares, the center one. Those all work kind of uh, normally the way you'd expect them to. It's just that the middle mouse button is a really nice way to do kind of the uh, uniform scale or the view rotate or view move. Uh, and I'm, I've actually really, really been appreciating that bubble. Um, so just middle mouse button kind of gives you that view functionality or the uniform scale for those tools. Um, but otherwise they still work like you'd expect them to in Maya. And even that center handle kind of works. Uh, so I'm just kind of getting a little bit of that shape in there. I'll come back and do a little more work to it in a minute. So I'm gonna select this face, right? There we go. And we'll right click extrude faces, bring that one out a little bit. Middle mouse button, move it. E for rotate, right? Remember they're all right here, move, rotate, scale, right? all right there but they, it is using the same quick keys as uh, Maya and actually a lot of software uh, Moto by default uses that you can turn Maya navigation on in fact things like double clicking and the stuff up right here actually from Moto right um, so believe it or not as you explore more stuff than Maya you'll find that a lot of them have the options to work like the other ones or are kind of converging a lot of on the same kind of interface stuff um, so right click again extrude faces bring that down um, middle mouse button, there we go. And we're just kind of starting to get that finger out there. Now you see how it's kind of a little slanted there, right? We don't really tend to like that. So of course, one of the things we could do is just use our move tool some more, right? I can just kind of, you know, click on that one, middle mouse to view move it. But of course, if I want to, we can also of course use that tweak tool, right? A tweak tool is a great fast way to just kind of easily select every, uh, just kind of click move at the same time. Instead of two clicks, it's one click. In this case, I'm going to hit t, uh, t, uh, two for edges, right? Two's your quickie for edges. That way, I can kind of start to bring some of these edges kind of around a little bit. There we go. Uh, maybe one for vertex, right? So it's pretty easy to kind of switch back and forth. Um, you notice I haven't been using a lot of the proportional mode here, which is kind of right up here. You can just kind of turn that on. Um, and you see that kind of has a little bit of fall off. Uh, page down and page up kind of control how much that falls off. You are free to use that if you want to, right? Let's see how it kind of has an, uh, kind of a little bit of an effect on the stuff around it. Um, it's up to you. Uh, we don't really get super detailed at this stage, so I find that I don't usually need it at these stages, but you'll find maybe when you have a little more geometry that it becomes useful. Um, so remember that that is kind of um, Blender's version of soft selection right there. Uh, and eventually a little bit later on, I'll probably show you a little bit about how to kind of reorient your manipulator a little bit. Blender does have some of that functionality. Um, so we'll kind of check that out as well. Um, so I'm gonna hit T or two, sorry, uh, for edge mode because my tweak tool's still on, right? When it, when it's on, it kind of stays on until you switch it to something else, which is kind of nice, right? So I can just kind of keep doing a little bit of tweaking on those edges, and you can see I'm just kind of making sure that these are fairly straight and kind of have a bit of kind of the decent thickness we want. 
right? So there we go. Now we can kind of see those, those fingers are doing a bit better, right? Um, and as I said, like we can go back to one for just vertices. And you can switch between the selection types, right? There's no, there's no multi-component, unfortunately. I haven't found it yet in here like Maya has. Um, but since the tweak tool stays on and you can easily switch with quick keys, it still works pretty well, right? It's not quite as intuitive, but it's still um, you know, pretty easy to do. Um, so that gives us a good starting point for those. Uh, now in this case, we kind of really need our thumb on here, right? And I'm also kind of feeling like maybe the palm's a little bit short right here, right? Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of go back up to here, left click drag, switch to select bo uh, box select again. Because remember, you can go in here and you can um, kind of box select, right? Now, one of the things you'll notice when we're in vertex mode, so I'll hit three for face mode. Um, one of the things you'll notice is it kind of does um, only select kind of what it sees. Um, so you can always hit up arrow to kind of grow that selection and then down arrow to shrink, right? Um, so that can be a good way to kind of get you a lot of your selection and then maybe up or down arrow. Uh, the select menu has that, right? So you can select all, control A, invert selection, um, box select is right there, circle select is right there, um, more or less growing and shrinking. And you even saw that there was that uh, inner region loop thing, which is actually kind of neat. Um, only no package I know by default that has that's Moto. <laughs> uh, select linked is actually uh, kind of back bracket, and that is uh, your version of select connected. So you can't double click on a face to select connected. Uh, that actually does face loops in here. Um, so there's a different quick key for that. Um, so uh, in this case, um, maybe down arrow just to shrink it a little bit more than up arrow. And you see I can kind of go up and down with the arrows. There we go. Um, and I think I'm gonna add these as well. So tab for drag select, and just kind of grab these really quick. Oh, shift, remember hold down shift, right? Just like in Maya, just to add to selections. Then we'll hit W for move. Can move this down a little bit. E for rotate, rotate it a little bit. Just kind of give it a little bit more kind of stretch there. There we go. Because I want an extra edge loop through here, right? Um, we didn't want our fingers to be super thick. Um, uh, we want and we want there to be space, right? Because if you actually look at your hand, your thumb is actually on the back of the wrist. So I'm gonna hit two to go back to edge mode. And I'm gonna right click so that I can go to loop cut slide, right? Loop cut slide. Now, if you just click, it'll put the edge right in the center. If you left click drag, you can slide it, right? In this case, I want it right in the center, so I'll just click. There we go. And it automatically is selected, so you can just you know move it around a little bit if you want to. Of course, double clicking on an edge, just like in Maya or Moto or even 3D Studio Max nowadays, will select an edge loop. That's actually become pretty universal for selecting edge loops. Um, there we go. Um, and now you can see we can go back to face mode, three for faces. And we're going to select this face for our thumb, right? We don't want it on this row because if you actually look at your thumb, it's not exactly on the side of the hand. It's actually kind of on the side a little bit below it, right? So I was kind of offset it a little bit so it's a little bit below. And also this edge loop in here, it's kind of on the back so that there's that space, right? And of course, as you guessed it, we're going to extrude. So right click, extrude faces, bring that out a bit. Middle mouse button for move, E for rotate, middle mouse button for view rotate. And I'll hit W again for move, middle mouse button move. Then maybe one more extrude, right click, extrude faces. There we go. And if you want R for scale, middle mouse button will do uniform scale. And then uh, W for move, middle mouse button. There we go. And of course, if I hit two, I go back to edge mode and I could double click, double left click on that edge. E for rotate, middle mouse button. And there we go. And you can kind of see we're slowly getting kind of the hand on here, right? And of course, you can adjust the, th uh, the finger and thumb sizes as much as you need to. You can make your hands larger. You can kind of have fun and make this a bit stylized, right? The last thing we want to do though is we want to kind of minimize our stars, right? We're naturally gonna have some stars in here, right? This right here is a vertex with five edges, right? This is a vertex with five edges. We've talked about this before. So a star is actually a vertex and it's the number of edges that makes it the kind of star it is. This is a five star, right? Um, that's natural. You're gonna have some five stars in the crotch area, the butt. Um, you're gonna have some stars up in kind of the shoulders. Um, there's naturally some branching structures that go on here. You notice how these five stars aren't terribly affecting our ability to shape, and they'll behave themselves pretty predictably. So naturally, some five and three stars are on models, right? The idea that you can model without stars on a complicated model is 
silly. Um, but you do want to be careful, right? You don't want uh, all of your uh, polygons to be five stars, right? Only when they're necessary. Um, so in this case, even though none of these are really hurting us, like these three stars here and these three stars here, they're not really necessary either, right? So I'm going to hit Q to kind of go back to my regular uh, marquee selection tool, the select box. Remember, Q toggles through those, but if you left click, hold, there's options there, right? And what I want to do is I want to take some of these edge loops out. So I'm going to double click on this edge loop, right? So that's kind of in between the three stars. It's kind of the uh, part of the four polygons that we didn't extrude for our fingers, right? Because we only extruded a single polygon in this row or two there. Now, like I said, if you wanted three, of course, you could extrude a third one out. Um, if you wanted both your fingers to just be smaller fingers, you don't make, need to make super finger here, but you can. That's what's really cool about kind of setting it up this way is you have options um, for how you want to kind of build it up. And also I've shown you how to build a model with five to, uh, that can support five toes or five fingers, right? Now remember we saw the other day that we can actually uh, dissolve these polygons, right? So we're in edge mode. If we right click, uh, sorry, not right click, uh, delete. I always forget that. It's, it, one of those things that's actually not bad about Blender, it's just I'm still getting used to it a little bit. Uh, remember, if you hit delete, um, or I think Backspace also do it as well, um, it gives you options for what you could delete, right? And uh, usually you want to dissolve, right? Because uh, that'll get rid of um, the edges or faces and their vertices, right? So dissolve edges, because if we just did delete edges, see how it kind of leaves behind some of the other edges? It's kind of, ugh, right? So when you hit delete, use dissolve, dissolve edges, and that'll take that edge loop out. Then we can double click up here. It's not that edge loop, it's a little mini one, right? And you see that's kind of uh, in between these three stars also. So we can just hit delete, dissolve edges, there we go. And then what it does is it leaves us with a triangle here and a triangle here, and kind of this edge loop that goes in between them, right? These two edges that go in between them. An edge loop doesn't really technically have to be a full loop, but it, it usually has the potential to be a full loop. It's, it's basically edges that go kind of um, head to tail and usually go around on the loop. Right? But technically, you can have partial edge loops. Um, so I just select those two edges that go in between the triangles. And then, of course, delete, dissolve. And now you can see that we've gotten rid of a lot of these stars. Um, that shape doesn't have as much bulge here. That shape doesn't have as much bulge. So this is really going to allow us to make this a lot more efficient. right? And of course, if I want to, I can go in here and do a little more shaping, either with the tweak tool or just the regular move tool. right? Kind of depends on how you feel about that. Um, I like the tweak tool. Um, but you know, I don't want to make sure you guys don't feel like you have to use the tweet tool if you don't want to, right? All right, so I'll kind of just bring those out a little bit. So we're getting close to having this hand done now, but it does leave us with a triangle here and a triangle here. Now, this is a little tricky, although when you have a video to watch it, it is actually a lot easier. Uh, so oh, we're still in edge mode, two for edges. So I'm going to click this edge. I'm going to hit Q just to go, and go back to my regular selection so we don't need our move tool on at the moment. So I've got this edge selected, and what I want to do is I want to move this edge over to here, and then move this edge over to here, right? We want this triangle to be moved over to kind of where the middle finger would be, right? Um, and then we're going to do the same thing with this triangle, kind of move it up to the top of the index finger. Um, one that'll help us get rid of the triangles, but they'll also kind of meet together like this, that little one did here, and we can get rid of it. This also allows me to show you another tool. Um, so if we right click, you'll see that there is actually something called Rotate Edge. And you'll see what it does is it actually spins this edge. This is Maya's version of this is Spin Edge Tool, right? So if you're in Maya, um, just like that kind of subdivide in edge mode um, allowed us to put the show loop in, in Maya, the Connect Tool, right? It's right below Multicut, but there's a tool called Connect that if you have faces or edges selected, kind of like in the Blender video, um, although you can do it with faces in Maya, um, the Connect Tool will do that. Right, um, but this is in Maya the spin edge tool. Here it's just rotate um, edge, which rotate spin synonyms, right? <laughs> so I'm going to keep spinning it. So right click and we'll just uh, rotate edge again. And now you see that we rotated it enough times that uh, the triangle is no longer on this row, right? See how if we look at this row of quads going up here, this is now a quad. The triangle is still pointing towards kind of the wrist, right? So it's, uh, the single vertex at the wrist area. But now you can see it's kind of on this row where the ring finger would be. And what we do is we repeat that process. So I switch the edge again to this edge, and then we right click, rotate, right click, rotate, and now the edge is here. So you see we kind of rotate enough times that it's no longer on the row it was on. 
See how this quad now has a quad above it? And now you can see this triangle with the single vertex at the wrist is now kind of where uh, it's on the mega finger, right? Kind of the inside of the mega finger. So we're going to do the same thing over here. Now you'll notice I select the edge in the direction I want to move it. I spin it, right, or rotate it. So in this case, I want to move this triangle over here just like I move this triangle over here. Um, so that you select the edge on that side that in the direction you want to move it. Um, so once again, what I want to do is I want um, this triangle to kind of be kind of here. So I rotate, and then I rotate again. And now you see how kind of the triangle's here. You'll notice also that the side of your kind of uh, big finger here, your index finger, see these quads now flow perfectly into this row. Basically, if you can go back and do a um, loop cut and slide, and it kind of goes all the way kind of through um, this row, right? Like that. We don't want to add that. I'm going to undo that in a second here. But if it goes all the way kind of through the fingers and the hand perfectly like that, then you've spun this triangle correctly, right? So what I want to do is I want to move it over one more though. So I want this triangle no longer be here, but here. So I right click, rotate edge, right click, rotate edge. And now you see how kind of the top goes into these quads. And now you'll see that there's two triangles that kind of touch each other like an hourglass, just like we had over here at the, earlier in the video, right? And of course we can hit delete, dissolve edges, and now you see those triangles are gone. And you see that the, uh, that rotate edge feature, spin edge in Maya, right? It's in the edit mesh menu of Maya, spin edge, allows us to change the loop flow to make the edge loop flow in here better, right? So you can actually use this tool to move triangles around, but also make the loop flow better, right? Make the edge loop flow better. The last thing I don't like is kind of having this three star right here, right? At the end of the day, is that really that bad? No, but if we can get rid of it pretty quickly and easily, we might as well. So what I do is I select the edge that's in between the five star on the thumb here, so that's a, a vertex with five edges, and the three star, right? This is a vertex with three edges. So I select that edge, and what we do is we rotate that. So I'm gonna rotate it, and actually that did it perfectly, right? Um, if it doesn't, um, keep going until you kind of have what looks like two triangles kind of making a quad like this. Uh, just to show you, if you rotate one more time, see how kind of uh, it creates two triangles that look like a giant triangle, and you've kind of got this big six star here. We didn't want that. And if you rotate again, it goes back to the start. So eventually, this rotate tool will go back to the start because what this is actually doing is, you notice how it wasn't creating a new edge? It wasn't creating any new vertices. It was really just taking an existing edge and connecting it differently to the, vert to the already existing vertices um, on the polygons it shared. So nothing new is actually created, right? No new edges created, no new vertexes created, no new polygons created. What it's doing is it's just taking that edge and it's connecting it to different vertices that already exist on the polygons it shares. So it's really just kind of changing the configuration of what you have. Um, and because of that, if you go enough times, it goes back to the start, it goes in a circle because it's rotating, <laughs> right? Uh, so we like this one where that's not a six star and when the two triangles, which are actually quads, um, look like a quad. And then we can just hit delete, dissolve edges, and that is the hand. Now I'm gonna go back to the tweak tool a little bit here really quick and just some edge mode, I can kind of tweak some of these sh shapes a little bit just to kind of get the form a little bit closer to what I want it to be, there we go. So see how we can kind of really come in here with that tweak tool and pretty quickly and easily just adjust things. One for vertex. And we can just kind of nicely kind of make these great little adjustments so that the hand seem, pretty seamlessly blends into the rest of the model while still being polygonally quite efficient, right? There aren't tons and tons of polygons here for this. Um, and it has good edge flow and it's all quads, right? We even have kind of this nice little edge flow kind of right there in between the thumb. And that's great. Now, one thing I do want to show you guys in this video just before I go, um, just to make sure you guys know how to do this, um, if you accidentally uh, have to delete polygons or something like that. Um, I'm going to go back to selection tool. And I'm going to go back to three for face mode, right? And I'm just going to select those two faces. And I'm going to hit delete. Right? Now, if I hit delete and I go to faces, you notice how delete faces actually works fine, right? So it's really kind of more that uh, 
dissolve for edges and edge loops, kind of like we have control delete in Maya. That does leave us with a giant polygon here. So what we have to do is we have to uh, hit 2 to go back into edge, mo um, edge mode, double click to select this edge loop that's there, because usually a hole has a border edge loop. And if you right click, you'll notice there is a fill function. And you'll notice that when it fills, it fills with triangles. So if we right click, one of the things you'll see is it doesn't really have it in here per se. So what you can do is there is actually in the edge feature here, I think it is, let's see here. Um, might be in face mode. Um, the face mode right here. So face mode has this. So the nice thing is sometimes you can't right click it from the context menu, but remember they're up here too, right? So all these tools are usually here. So if you go to face mode, there's something called grid fill. And what that'll do is it'll actually fill those both with quads, right? So kind of good to know about that, right? Um, technically though, face also just has a regular fill instead of um, the grid fill. And that'll just fill it with those triangles also. Um, kind of feel like there was one that uh, um, filled without it. I'm just trying to remember where it's at. Um, but honestly, the grid fill should work great for you, right? And if for whatever reason it connects that edge weird, um, remember you can always go two for edge mode, select an edge, hit delete. In this case, uh, say I'll delete edge, it doesn't do what we want. So remember when you hit delete, you really want to dissolve edges. So if you ever end up with that, or you have to kind of rebuild that, uh, keep in mind that um, there is actually um, knife topology tool in edge mode, right? So see I'm in edge mode still. If you right click knife topology, what you can do is you can just click from vertex to vertex and then hit enter. And that is your ability to manually kind of put an edge in. So I wanted to kind of make sure that you guys saw that you have, uh, believe it or not, some uh, fill functionality, right? There is actually the ability to fill and grid fill. Um, Technically, you can also even use, like we said, the uh, knife topology for manually kind of putting in an edge uh, between two vertices if you need to also. Um, so I just want to kind of make sure you had that option as available as well. Uh, I think that'll be a great place to stop for today. Uh, when we come in uh, next week, because this will kind of be the final video for the week, um, what we'll do is we'll start to put some more edge loops in to do a little more detailing. We'll start to kind of... Um, uh, work on the face and show off the armor, right? We still have uh, a little bit of time to work on this, right? We don't have to get this done in two weeks. Um, so keep in mind that you only really have to go as far as I have on the videos, right? Um, so by the end of this week, I'm really hoping to see a troll that's got a shoulder loop, some decent shaping. Remember, kind of really try to mimic the shape. If you need to look up some reference pictures, you have that, right? Um, and you should have some hands, fingers, and toes on there. And remember, don't just willy-nilly do whatever you think's right, because I can tell you right now it's wrong, <laughs> right? It's probably going to be wrong. Uh, follow these videos well. If you have to watch them again, watch them again, right? Because this is going to show you how to build a good, efficient, clean, all-quad polygonal mesh um, with uh, fairly strong edge loops. All right, that's a great place to stop.